Welcome back. I'm Roger Stone, and you're on The Alex Jones Show right here at InfoWars. And now it is my distinct pleasure to bring on our guest, Tina Gertz. Tina Gertz is a personal friend of the president and the first family for two decades. Here's what President Trump himself said about Tana. Tana is truly a star. She has that rare combination of laid back charm and razor sharp execution, and she doesn't put up with nonsense. Tana, you sound a little bit like me. Uh, I am <laughs> delighted to have you here on The Alex Jones Show. Welcome. Well, thank you, Roger, for having me. I'm excited to be here with you. Now, you first kind of became a television star in 2005 when you starred on The Apprentice. As I recall, you're the only person in the history of the show to never be fired. But then you had a whole second career when you emerged as a key strategist for Donald Trump's campaign in Iowa and then a senior advisor to his campaign. I remember meeting you at the Republican National Convention when Alex Jones and I were actually invited on the set of the Young Turks, which turned out to be an ambush uh, in a shouting match that you can still see on YouTube. I know that you're, like me, like Alex Jones, a fighter. Do you remember that terrific occasion? I remember meeting you, and I remember meeting Alex, and I remember the fight. I was right there, right beside you, doing radio as well with an L.A. station, and the fight broke out, and I was like, who are these people? Like, what are, what are the Young Turks? I didn't even know who they were and couldn't understand why they were picking a fight with you guys. And you and Alex were fighters, just like myself, and uh, you were holding your ground, and, and there was there was chaos, and and then you and I talked afterwards, and it was just, it was, it was amazing. I mean, at the end of the day, we were making in history, Roger. It was indeed a piece of history. Actually, Tucker Carlson sent me this link, uh, which is up on YouTube just a few days ago, uh, marveling at how entertaining it is. Now, I thought, going back to 1988, uh, that Donald Trump had the stature, the independence, the size, I don't mean physical size, although he's very tall and broad-shouldered, to be a great yeah. president. Uh, and a lot of my friends in the political community made fun of me for that, saying, oh, Donald Trump, he'll never really run. He's just trying to burnish his brand. He could never win. And here we have, two years into the Trump presidency, uh, amazing success. What first convinced you that Donald Trump could be a great candidate and a great president? Well, that's a great question. I met him for the very first time in 2005, as you mentioned, when I was a contestant on his show, and I never wanted to go on the show for any other reason other than to learn from America's business icon, Donald Trump. And, and I went there and I had an amazing time, but as, I, as the weeks were clicking uh, off and, and people were getting fired left and right, and I, I got to spend more time with them, I realized this man, he's brilliant. Like he is super smart. He's so successful. I got to learn his mind. I got to learn what makes him tick. And I realize uh, we're all very, very similar, like yourself, myself, Donald Trump, the go-getters that that never quit, that don't care what people think about them. Um, you know, I'm not a billionaire yet, but he is, and I, I just wanted to absorb it all. And I acted as if I was a student of his, and I had an 18-week business course learning from him, and so I saw uh, attitude and persistence and tenacity and all these characters that I, I thought, wow, he could make a great president and he would make a great president. But I never thought he'd ever uh, give up his plush life and, you know, his penthouse and, and the career that he had to go and, and deal with the swamp creatures that he's had to deal with. So I never thought he would do it uh, because you'd have to be crazy to want to to want to make America great again, because look at what's happening to him. So I knew he'd be great, but I didn't think he'd do it because I thought he had such a great life. Why, why surround yourself with this toxic environment that he's been put under? And I'm so happy he did, though. Well, uh, I think people underestimate his toughness. I think back to an interview he gave with Oprah Winfrey almost 30 years ago, in which she said, what about politics, Donald? Do you think you'd ever run for public office? Do you think you'd ever run for president? No, he said, I don't think so, unless things get so bad that I have no choice. And that's where we are today. That's, Donald yeah. Trump didn't run because he needed to be somebody. He didn't need to run because he needed to prove something. He loves his country, and he saw us going down the drain. 
and therefore he's serving at president, as president and at great cost to himself, not only financial cost, but the vituperation and the personal attacks on him and his family are enough to turn your stomach. He oh, is literally the toughest man I have ever met in American politics, and that covers Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan and uh, and many and Bob Dole and many others. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say you said exactly what I said to him, Roger. I was just with him up. Uh a couple weeks ago, and backstage with him, you know, I could say anything to him, and, and I just looked at him, and I said, President Trump, I said, you are the toughest, strongest man that I know. Those are the exact words that came out of my mouth, and he was like, oh, thanks, Tana. You know, he brushes it off like it's no big deal, but I'm like, no, I mean this. You are so tough. I mean, you and I are tough, Roger, but honestly, day in and day out, uh, attacking of the family, your wife, your children, your looks, your weight, your mental capacity, I mean, you name it. It's like at some point I said to myself, I'm tough. But when I give in, like when I cave after two years of this and just say, you know what, screw it. I'm going to go back to my life. I want to, you know, eat Top Ramen. I mean, excuse me, I'm going to eat filet mignon and not be like eating Big Macs on the plane. I want to have my life back. But he does it, and he does it for you and me and America. Well, and the results, I think, are clear. Um, 4.2 million new jobs created. Unemployment at the lowest rate since 1969. Hispanic and Black unemployment at the lowest uh, rate since those statistics began being kept. Uh, the greatest wage growth in our history. Billions of dollars coming back in the country for reinvestment. Rebuilding our military strength as a deterrent. Uh, redoing these multi-international trade deals that serve our trade partners well, but suck the jobs out of America. I really think the president's done a good job of framing next Tuesday's election as a difference between jobs and mobs. In Donald Correct. Trump, you have proven results. What's your What's your thoughts on next Tuesday's midterm elections? Well, I agree with you and what you said about everything that he's done. It's like, show me another president that has that track, re track record. Show me who has done all these amazing things. I mean, I'm a woman, I'm a small business owner, woman-owned business, and I couldn't be more excited to be a woman entrepreneur in, in today's age. Uh, so I think it's amazing that he's going to these rallies and he's tooting his own horn because we know the fake news isn't going to report it. So. Uh, I, I'm very excited about Tuesday. I've got my fingers crossed that the Republicans get out there and vote and don't just rest on our laurels that we've got a great president, you know, as commander in chief doing the job. Because at the end of the day, he said to me, how are we looking in Iowa? And I said, I'm, I'm scared, to be quite honest with you. And he goes, well, how did they win? You know, two years ago, I said, uh, you, that's how they won. You were on the ticket, and people went out and voted because of you. Now these people, these politicians, have to be worth something, and a lot of them, frankly, aren't worth their weight. And 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 they're, I'm a little nervous. I pray that people get out. I'm telling people, you got to get out and vote if you like your 401k, if you like having money in the bank. If you like where we're at with taxes, and if you like having America be respected again, for goodness sakes, don't let the Democrats get their power uh, and, and take it away from us, because we are in for a treat for what's going to happen in 2020. So they got to vote. All right. So now you know why Donald Trump referred to Tana Gertz as the golden one. Thank you for joining us here on The Alex Jones Show. You said it. Uh, and you said it best, every vote will count. And although Donald Trump is not on the ballot, you know the mainstream media and the fake news media will interpret this election as a, as a referendum on his leadership. It's the economy, stupid, as James Carville once famously said. Tana Gertz, thank you for joining us here at The Alex Jones Show. Thank you so much for having me, Roger. Have a great day. All right, there you have uh, the woman Donald Trump referred to as the golden one, longtime friend of the president and the first family, and one of the architects of his extraordinary upset victory in Iowa. I'm Roger Stone. You've been on The Alex Jones Show.